everyone. So today we have, like, honestly, a guest I've been, okay, we've been trying to have on the podcast. We've had him before, never recorded, uh, just my timings and really bad way of working uh, impacted along the way. But today we finally have Adil Hussain, the founder of the Brotherhood UAE. Uh, honestly, it's a pleasure to have you on board, man. Uh, I remember I met you in Sharjah at a festival and I was like, man, this guy looks fucking interesting. So happy I finally met you. Got on a few um, calls, WhatsApps, met up a few times. That was quite cool, but it's good to finally have you on board. So yeah. welcome to Kundu I am glad we finally managed to make it happen. Same. <laughs> it was a moment where I was like, it's not going to happen. No. I and by think. the way, yeah. Yeah. But here we are. Everything had to happen the way it's supposed to happen. Yeah, right? exactly. So here exactly. we are. Awesome, man. So, listen, so I'm sure you know Kundrajir, the podcast. So, Kundrajir in Arabic is quote unquote be a man, right? So, I wanted to ask you, the way I start every episode, is what does Kundrajir or be a man mean to you? That's a good question. Um, be a man. I would say be a man of your word, mm. be a man of integrity, uh, be a man on a mission. Uh, a man that is accountable and responsible, uh, a man that knows himself mm. um, and is a protector of peace and people. That's what it means to me. And and, and and in a world of chaos, how do you think people find themselves or find their way? In a world of chaos? I mean, in, in the world that we live in today where you have so many different, you know, um, people and celebrities and ways of thinking and all that just come and interfere in your way. Uh, how do you think, you know, I think many people are doing it wrong, mm. first of all. I think, so if I just go the opposite way, yeah. The way that I think people are responding right now is is copying everyone else, mm. living in a world of FOMO, which is fear of missing out um, by comparison, thinking they should be someone else. And what needs to happen is to come back to themselves. It's just to take a moment and think, am I happy as I am? Mm -hmm. And who am I? And if I was to ask you, who are you? I think it'd be actually quite a hard questions mm. to answer. Even for myself, mm. I struggle to answer this question. I guess we're figuring it out. But what's not going to work is is by living by comparison and looking outside of ourselves for the answer. Definitely. Especially being in this in this beautiful, wonderful city. Of course. It's so easy to get lost. It's so easy to lose yourself. It's so easy to not know what you're doing and why you're here. You know, in one of the most religious parts of the world can feel like we're not really following faith, mm. you know, or mm. connecting to our faith mm. as much. Uh, even me, like I live <coughs> super close to a mosque. There's a mosque every 200 meters. Yeah. And I think, and I haven't been to the mosque enough, if I'm being honest. Mm. Um, my faith is strong and getting stronger. Yeah. And I'm grateful to be in this part of the world that allows me to feel comfortable practicing my faith. In the UK, not mm -hmm. so, not so comfortable. Um, especially when there's a mosque every, I don't know, I feel like a few thousand kilometers, it feels like. Mm. Um, but here's to the journey in finding ourselves. It's interesting you talk, you talk about faith, right? Because, I mean, as I was driving in, I'm like, this stuff is something that I want to talk to you about because, you know, I think today, you know, th 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 there's a few key people who I've been seeing on Instagram, uh, who are promoting masculinity, but are also pro promoting faith and religion, mm. which is something that you wouldn't normally see in the past. If you go to, as you're saying, like if you go somewhere else in the world, if it's in the States or the UK, it's more about living this free-spirited man life who maybe might not care about religion, might not think about the values and the, you know, the, the base of what religion can offer you and what it does for you uh, and how that helps you in your life. But I think here what I, I love what, what, about what you're saying is that, or even maybe the way that I, I see it is that, Religion is such a key part of you being a man yeah. because one, it helps discipline you. It teaches you actually what you're meant to be doing on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis, but also how to look forward to the future, what, how to treat people, how to, how to plan your life and what's, what are the, the frameworks if you want to get there. I think religion is a really nice guideline. Mm. Some people can take it out of context, out of control, and it can go down some other paths. But in general, it's just a, a guide. Mm. Like you said, it does, kind of, it does really... Um, enforced discipline even praying five times a day which i don't do i admit i don't um but that as a discipline is amazing and mm. what it's giving you is structure and for a man to be a man i feel we need structure mm. and we thrive on structure and discipline and those that are quote unquote successful they probably tell you the same thing and for the last 10 to 15 years i've been obsessed with the morning routine mm. as one of my 
kind of pillars. And it falls on and off from time to time, but I'm an advocate of it. Mm. And I used to watch all these different videos on YouTube about morning routine. And it's the same yeah. thing. Look, what the Islam teaches waking up for Fajr, for example. Man, you start the day like that, you're already starting the day in a beautiful way. Yeah. And you almost know that you're, the day's going to go well, you know? Exactly. Because you're waking up for yourself, you're waking up for faith, you're waking up for your God. Um, you're starting the day with peace, yes. um, and serenity, and, and submission. I mean, that's beautiful. Exactly. And so if you look at the way that the world talks about morning routines, to say those typical American mm. uh, motivational guys, mm. make your bed, go to the gym. <laughs> it's, it's the same thing, right? But it's but it, they all teach the same thing, which is around have some structure to your day. Yeah. Do some things that are good for yourself that make you a stronger man inside and out. Mm. And that's what I think faith does for you. And times When times are hard and you can speak to God or you can just reconnect there, it does give you strength. Mm. You know, it's, it's crazy you say that because... You know, a lot of times, I mean, maybe when I was when I was a bit younger, I I didn't think about life that way at all. I'll be very honest about it. I I'd always say I'll figure it out, or I'll speak to my friends, I'll speak to my sister, or I'll speak to my parents, and I'll try to figure it out along the way. But I never, it's, I don't like to say it, but I've never thought about it as you know, I need to pray so that I can get some clarity, but also help myself along the way for for tomorrow and for the next ten, twenty years after that. You know, and I think. I think that again, that to me is the biggest shift that's happening, at least from within, from what I'm seeing, is that this promotion of religion as a whole, uh, respect of whatever religion you follow, um, and just again getting on that uh, road to discipline and being a lot more humble, down to earth, but also um, respectful of others as yeah, well. Yeah. Uh, the way you treat yourself, the way you treat others, the way you treat women—that's another thing that we'll talk we'll talk about in a bit. Yeah. Um, you know, so yeah, it's 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 definitely been a blessing, I think, to uh, to reconnect in that sense. Um, but yeah, but you also need to keep pushing as well. You need to keep on doing it. It's and it's about that discipline and consistency, as you as you were saying a bit, not not in this context, but consistency in that sense to keep going. I was speaking it. to uh, Hisham mm. about yeah. about this journey because really I wasn't really that religious back mm. in the UK, and there, you know, you know, my journey has been quite tough here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, starting something from scratch, being away from home and family, like it was, it's been a really hard three years. Mm. And then the day when I f- remember finding the prayer mat in my apartment, and that kind of kickstarted everything for me. But when I started praying, so much changed in the space of those four or five months. Things aligned, things clicked for the business, for myself, for my soul. Um, and it just felt like, oh, wow, look at all these coincidences. Obviously, it's not coincidence. Like, mm. Your the energy is flowing in that in in that way, and yeah. it's just magic. Yeah. And so I just encourage. And same thing happened to me when I used to meditate. Mm. So before I came to Dubai, I would meditate every single morning. It started off from five minutes all the way to like twenty thirty minutes. I, w- I would. But during that time, mm. if I tell you I was in flow of life, like money was coming to me, just doors were opening. Mm. I was not even trying. And the same thing happened when I prayed Fajr. Mm. You know, because I started with that one. I started with the hardest one first. I feel yeah, like. yeah, yeah. But it's because I'm a morning person. Yeah. And actually, back then it was easier waking up. Now it's a little bit harder waking up for fudge. The timing mm. is, uh, yeah, it's tough. Um, but this is a, a note to self to get back to it. Yeah, definitely. You pray fudge? Alhamdulillah. Oh man, beautiful. Okay, I have to know. <laughs> See, now, now it's competition. Now we need to do it because because yeah, I mean, if someone else is doing it, why can't I do you it? You know what? We start we started a, a fudge WhatsApp group um, yes. for the Brotherhood, and uh, as a way of encouraging each other to wake up and just say oh. good morning and like you know and for a lot of the guys are still doing it i feel bad that i'm the one that's not <laughs> you're, you're, I, mean, I mean yeah i mean like you're the, you're, you're the leader of the pack and, and I, even I know so i need to be i need yeah, to lead by example yeah. that's another thing about being i think being a man is being a leader mm-hmm. and look not every man is a leader of people but every man should be able to lead himself of course i think that's really really important and that's why the whole going back to the whole structure thing is important as well uh but faith faith is everything man yeah so, okay. So, so now, how how do you think you've led yourself in these past? I mean, so maybe I'll maybe start start from your journey in Dubai, right? Because I know, because I know it hasn't been easy. I know mm. that the, the start was rough, and getting to where you are today p- most probably wasn't easy. No, but you've made it, right? Leading myself from being here and then just being kind of thrust into loneliness um, was tough. Mm. Even though it was a choice that I made to come out here. I didn't anticipate how lonely it would be. 
I came here to be in a relationship with someone. So I was coming here with the intention and an impression that I wouldn't be alone. Mm. There was a person I was with, which broke down very, very quickly. Like three months, I think. And I thought I'd be okay. But it was it was hard without mm. family. Mm. And then pandemic hit again and like so much stuff happened. And uh, because I didn't have a job, I was focusing on the coaching. I was focusing on building, like back then, mm. Brotherhood DXB. Mm. Mm. I didn't realize how hard it would be to create a business, mm. how hard it would be to make a community. But I just knew this is what I had to do. So bro, there were, there were days when I couldn't afford to eat. There were days when uh, I had nowhere to live. And then, like, thankfully, friends or guys from the Brotherhood, or by coincidence and connection, said, hey, come, I have a a spare room you know come look at me for one of my good friends ian he took me in he just i think he just met me and he was just like hey i've got a, a room come come live with the family he's got wife and, and a kid and he invited me into his villa for like three four months and he put me in his king suite he, you know it wasn't the spare room he put me in oh. his main bedroom oh. and him and his wife took the other bedroom for like four months and i'll never forget these moments another guy uh, from the brotherhood one of the one of the first brothers he uh, he said, "I oh, would just come stay with me. I have got a spare room, three bedroom apartment in Business Bay. Take one. Didn't even ask for money. Rent. He said, pay what you can when you can.'" I was like, "Man, like God is looking after me during this time, you know, and I'll always be forever grateful for these yeah. people that have supported me." And one of the things that I've found is that it's so hard to ask for help, oh, yeah. especially as a man. Mm. Like, no, but I needed it so badly, and these guys, these men, reminded me that it's okay. Because it's not about you having to get back to us. You're doing great things. You're trying your best to build something for the for people, mm. and you just need a little bit of support too. Of course, you know. And this is whatever happens. Like even uh, um, one of the guys, yeah, yeah, he's like, look, listen, God's gonna reward me at some point. Let's, let's see. Like it's not it's not even about that, but yeah. it all comes around. Hundred percent. Um, but there were so many days, man, when I wanted to give up. So many days where I would just cry myself to sleep, just saying, what am I doing here? I can go home now back to the UK, back to my family, I can get a job that will pay me, I don't know, 15,000 dirhams a month, and I'll be fine. Like, literally, I would be okay. Mm. No complaints. But something kept me here, knowing that there was a, there was a, a mission. Mm. This really is a mission. This is something greater than myself, and I know that I can, now I can't stop. Now I've built this this brotherhood. The, yeah. Even the men say, listen, where you can't stop now. Definitely. Like, what are we going to do? You know, as much as I want to believe that it can continue without me which obviously it can at some point in the future but right now it needs to be led mm. and this comes back to leading and i'm just the man that needs to do it right now you know uh figuring it out as i go along in terms of business i did everything from the beginning from the marketing to getting people together to speaking at different events yeah. and mm. i'm not a public speaker i'm not even why am i even on a podcast mm. who am i who are any of us we're just numbers. We're just numbers. We're just people. We just have happen to have opinions and thoughts, and we suddenly like I don't know. And no disrespect to podcasters, of right? But everyone's on a podcast, mm. and I think it connects with this desire to want to be heard and seen. Mm. And this is our opportunity. And I'm grateful for people like you that invite me onto podcasts because it means that there's something that I'm doing that you want to hear, yeah. and a thought that I have that you want to put out to the world. And I think it's beautiful that we can have these conversations. But sometimes I check myself, and I'm thinking. What am I doing? Yeah. What does it even matter? Exactly. You know? But the mission keeps me going. I know that men of the world need something like this. We all need um, a bunch of men that we can chat to and have some fun with and chill out with without it needing to be centered around what are you doing for me? Mm. What am I going to get from you? Mm. And uh, let's have fun only. And then during the week, we don't even message each other. A lot of the guys that join the group don't have friends. And the, one of the core reasons why men join Brotherhood UAE is because of loneliness and wanting to connect with real like-minded men. Which isn't just some networking group where everyone just wants your business card. Oh, sorry, wants to give their business mm, card. Mm. Um, and it isn't just going out and partying on the weekend. You know? I feel like we fall into those, into those three areas. It's either you're making money, you're going to the gym together, or you're partying. Mm. But the Brotherhood brings something a bit deeper. Yeah. Which is real connection. And that's kept me going. From the day when there was no one showing up on the in the park with me uh, to have our man cave, which is the the men's circle that we mm. run every week, mm. to now where we're at, where we have 
an average of 30 men every Tuesday that sit in a circle. Just talk it up. And, yeah. and the key thing, as I mentioned before, is just being consistent. Yeah. There were days when I didn't want anyone to show up, where I would go to the circle and I wish and pray that no one shows up so I can go back. Just because I was afraid of it failing. Mm. And what does that say about me? You know? Yeah. And then toying with the idea, should I get a job? Should I not get a job? And then it got to a point where I was like, I can't get a job now because it's starting to pick up. It's starting to gain some momentum. And actually the flexibility that I have allows me to do more as long as I'm efficient. And this goes back to leading, right? Leading myself. It's hard to lead yourself with no structure when there's no job. The job provides you with a nine to five or a nine to six and that gives you structure. But when your day is whatever you want to make of it, how do you structure your day? Yeah. That took me three years. Now I'm in a place where I structure my day like I have a job. But for a long time, you're winging it in days where I do nothing. And then I would self-sabotage and procrastinate. So as much as I'm a leader of men, helping men overcome certain things, of course I struggle too. I'm not fixed and healed. I'm not some whole man that hasn't got things he's got to work on. I'm always working on these things. But maybe I can catch it a bit more quickly this time. Mm. Maybe I have a few more tools um, that I can access. But it's still hard. Mm. You know, it's still tough. And you've seen it. You've seen the growth over these two years. You met me at an event. Yeah. The following year, I spoke at the event. And that's that's big. That's big. Yeah. And when I tell you how my faith connected me to that, that's what exactly happened. I was flowing and thriving. And then when this happened, I was like, oh my God. Within a year, that's the kind of progress. So now this year, Alhamdulillah is going to be even, even more amazing. Totally, totally. You know, it's already going really well. But when I speak to people, speak to you, speak to my audience, it's just about don't give up. Never. So it's nice to see that your podcast con- is continuing. And of course, look, and I'll be very honest with you. Look, there are days where I've I've had exactly what you were saying, which is that you hope that something I don't know, doesn't work out because I don't know. Because for me, I'm I'm I think like a lot of men, I'm I want everything to work out. I want everything to be perfect. And I know this podcast is not perfect. I know so. But at the end of the day, what I keep reminding myself is that okay, you need to keep going because if you don't keep going, then what are you doing? Yep. You've started something. But then you stopped it because it didn't. It wasn't perfect. I mean, you don't like. As long as you're going, as long as you're start, you're starting, you're finishing what you've started. That to me is what matters. Is it finishing? What what, no. what do you finish? How, what's the end result here? Exactly. I mean, <laughs> I, again, like like I think for me, I think for me, the the bigger goal is just again to spread the message to as many people as I possibly can. What's the message? <sighs> why know, are you doing this? So to me, the main reason why I'm doing this podcast is well, there's a few reasons. One, to you know, to share my own journey about, you know, uh, going through ADHD, depression, and just how, I don't know how th- I've m- not made it, but how I'm going through life. And it's, and it's if you want, like, um, like, like a journey, right? Because maybe you speak to me today and I speak to me in a year, it'll be very different from where I am. Uh, but as well, sharing my own experiences, my own learnings, my own uh, take on things. Uh, it's not like, it's not like I'm a, I'm a, so like I'm a what's, what do you call it like industry expert or whatever, but it's still one more person talking about an issue that isn't talked about enough, which is men's mental health. Yeah. The other thing is that again, I feel like as 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 you were saying before, like you know, for for me, a lot of men don't have a platform to speak, or maybe they weren't given a platform, and now that there is one, which I feel is my podcast, it's like you know what? Why don't we give them that platform to speak? Why don't we give men the space where you know what they can share what? what it is to be a man, what their journey has been like, and even women as well, what their experiences with men's mental health was like. So shedding lights on different topics, shedding lights on different things that we don't often think or talk about, or maybe even realize that other people go through as well. Because that's something that I've realized. Like even when you're saying now, you're like, you know, uh, it's like there are days when, when you hope no one would show up. I'm like, that's exactly me. There is. Literally. E- even, even, even things at work, even things in training, like there are days when I'm like, I have, I don't want to do it. I just hope something goes wrong so that I don't have to do it. Don't you think about, like, going back to that thing of, why are we doing this? Mm. And I have some weird existential crisis moments in my car. I'm driving. I'm just like, ah. what's the point of all of this? Mm. And I mean life. Yeah. Uh, what? Why? Man, you're, man you're, you're, everyone's here for to, sp- to spread their own message. 
to me th that that's how i see it yeah. we're all we're all put on earth for a purpose for a for a bigger goal you might not see it thing is you know i i, th I think about these things every now and then not yeah. maybe not to like that much but to me i always think about it i'm like okay hold on I, i've been put on this earth i'm talking to people i'm meeting people i don't know who i might have impacted yeah even if it might have been one small word or one small line that i've said then they might have been actually that really helped me but they might, might not have told me to me that's that's my i feel like that's my purpose these yeah. days is to help people in whatever possible way that i can do it uh, and i'm sure yours might be on a similar way or maybe not depending on how you see it um but yeah i think just to help people man you're, we're all here for a purpose purpose you'll find with time i guess yeah. um but yeah that's that, that that's how i feel about it to be honest yeah, man, it's it's so necessary for us and, and i find that we'll, obviously i speak to a lot of men but hundreds of men that, that that i that i've spoken to over the last three years from the uae <clears> and, and outside and the pattern that i've realized is that those that are down sad exhausted by life are the ones that are not on a journey of purpose mm. they don't know what their mission is and we had a really great chat at the man cave on wednesday um about purpose mm. uh i was speaking to a client of mine and he was like i don't know what my purpose is i have a job but i just i don't enjoy it and i was like cool I said, do you need to have a purpose what if you just lived on purpose what if you were just intentional with how you spent your time in your day what if you found meaning in your job even if you don't like the job, but what if you found meaning mm. in it? And that meaning could be it's a means to an end. It means it allows you to do other yeah. things. In the absence of you finding out what your mission or purpose is, you know, what if you just found meaning in it? And why do we think that our meaning or purpose has to be aligned with money? Because sometimes, like this, maybe this will make you money one day, maybe, maybe it won't, but you're doing a greater uh, service. Spreading the word, it's a mission. Mm. I think that's also something that today people are thinking that their mission has to be aligned with money. No, it needs to be. You know, it was a great conversation, and I think one that can cause a lot of pain, but we can flip it. Mm -hmm. So those men that are lost, it's the one that they they feel that like they have no meaning. And there's a book called A Man's Search for Meaning. Have you heard of this book? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Vic sent it to me once. Yeah, I think, I think Victor so. Frankl. Yeah, yeah. And it was uh, about the Holocaust, and he was literally in the Holocaust as author. And he was in the concentration camps. And he said that those that died quickest and soonest were the ones that just gave up. Yeah. That those that found meaning in their existence lived longest, happiest, and some of them even made like him, made it out. Crazy. Amazing. Yeah. If that doesn't tell you that you have to find some meaning in what you're doing, I don't know what does. Literally. Why would you want to wake up on Monday and just feel like, Ugh, what's the point then? Exactly. What, but what are you living for? What's the point? I know it sounds we can we can make it seem so reductive and so simple, but... Sometimes it is. Do you know, I think as well, like the biggest pressure that, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say man, I think people in general, yeah. that a lot of people face these days is, you know, when you open Instagram, it's like, find your purpose, find this, do this. And you find all of these successful people who are like, I found my purpose. But you're like, how the fuck do I find my, I don't know. I, I don't know what my purpose is. And a lot, of, a lot of times people don't have that framework to find out what is, what's their purpose or even what they s see value in in life, right? Um, and I think that's, I mean, I, I struggled with that for a while where I'd do my job. Okay, I train and go to the gym. Great. Other than that, what am I living for? And this was like a good two years ago where I didn't know what to do. And I think it was around the time where I met you, which is where I was like, you know, let me start stepping outside of my comfort zone. Let me start meeting new people. Let me start yeah. networking, you know, and then from there, from there, from there, it took me to a journey, which we'll find out how that goes. But, uh, you know, but, uh, but yeah, I think this is one of the biggest things that the people in general are dealing with right it's just lack of clarity on what they think is uh their their purpose or what they should be living every single day to do 100 percent. but the takeaway from what you just said is yeah. you took yourself out of your comfort zone mm. so for anyone that's thinking how do i find my purpose go do more things go experience more life and do things that make you feel uncomfortable and another thing i'd add is uh go do some charity mm give back and i don't mean giving money i literally mean go in the trenches go actively do something hands on i recently went to this art studio in al mm. um which all the students are students of determination 
And these kids and these, well, they're, they're actually, they're like adults. They're, I think, 17 onwards. Okay. And amazing. Wonderful, wonderful humans that just are incredibly creative, which is mm. insane to see. Mm. They're really funny. And because they're on the spectrum, they're, uh, the way they talk to you is like super without filter. Just how I feel life should be, right? They just say how it is. They might say, hey, you're bored or whatever, you know. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, they just tell you stories and it's just it's it's kind of cute actually um but being there and just seeing that raw human connection and how much they can they want to just be with you and in that company mm. just made me realize that we've become so selfish as mm. as humans and we need to do more to give back yeah. you know we we just it's, it's quite sad to see to be honest Yes. The world that we're in now, attention seeking, money grabbing, purposeless, dopamine driven people. And I fall into the trap, yeah. just like everyone else. But when you go and give back, it just flips that on its head immediately. And you're like, ah, there's more to life. And we should be grateful. Definitely. So, yeah, I, I, look, look, I think one of the things that I wanted to ask you as well was, you know, um, what are the main things that you think men are struggling with these days? And and maybe keep it in Dubai or abroad, but I think Dubai maybe because, I mean, that's where we are and a lot of the, a lot of my followers as well are from Dubai. What do you think a lot of them are struggling with these days? Keeping up. Mm. Keeping up with what they think is required of them. Financially, status. <clears throat> a man standing in, in, in life and how he's seen as a high-value man, this, this HVM is... Mm. been thrown around the world but just in general we feel it we know when we feel like we're the guy mm -hmm. and that comes from like money status um and also our relationships and as a result of not as much money or not as much money in comparison or not or not having status or not having status by comparison mm. impacts our ability desire need and um success in dating and I didn't really want to go down the relationship route and, and mm -hmm. dating in Dubai situation. But the men I've noticed struggle with relationships. <coughs> they struggle to date, first of all. One, I feel like they have a lack of confidence when it comes to this. They feel like they're just a number. And from their own perspective, because there is so much choice here and it's become so accessible to date as much as you want, they themselves lack the need, desire to commit. Mm. So I'm noticing the pattern. This is not a lady's fault. Okay, I'm noticing the men just struggle to commit and just say, I'm in. I'm all in, let's go. Even dating one person. I love the idea of dating one person at a time. They say, oh, why would you put all your eggs in one basket? I'm like, why would you not? <laughs> why would you not want to give yeah. all your energy to that person? Know whether this, whether this can go somewhere and then you can, if not, then goes, you, you continue. But when you've got four people on the go, for example, yeah. and I was speaking to the ladies too, when you've got four <laughs> people on the go, it can make it tough for you yeah. to really give your time and effort and energy yeah um so I, I think men struggle with this men struggle with opening up and sharing that you know what's happening in their lives and they feel like they can't um expressing their truth even the men that are in relationships for example they struggle to be honest with their partners mm. about how they're really feeling because they think and feel that it might affect how they're seen by their partner and to some degree that is true mm. we had a big chat the other uh, two weeks ago now about should you tell your wife everything should you no. So you should be able to express every single thing to your partner. Should. Mm. Should doesn't mean you 100% sh you, you need to, to do tell it. them. Yeah. You know, because, and this is talked about a lot through psychology, um, but now I've also witnessed it and felt it even from my own journey and, and for the men that I've seen around me, especially when it comes to men being vulnerable. If you're too vulnerable with your partner, it can have... Are like a biological innate response that makes them feel mm. unsafe and not because they don't trust you or or that you you know your vulnerability is like bad but imagine you're telling your partner i feel scared i'm anxious i'm not I'm worried about next month but how are we going to survive it puts them into a state of also okay i need to do something act like fight, freeze, flight, whatever it might be, mm. which pulls them into a place of masculinity. And what we've seen in the world now is that more women are moving into that place of masculine energy yeah. because they need to just get things done. Yeah. And when they're, when they're exp 
being met by their partner of where they're not maybe getting their shit together. And a lot of men fall into that trap of mm. being vulnerable but staying in that place of vulnerability. It's a turn off. It's a turn off. Um, and often we don't know why that's happening. It's not a conscious thing. It's just something changes in 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 inside of them where it's like, nah, okay, I don't, I, I don't know. I'm mm. not attracted anymore. Mm. And I've seen it. Some women call it the ick. Some women just literally get turned off. Maybe and for maybe for some it doesn't happen oh, unless it's over a long period of time. So what I tell the men is, bring your problems to us as men. Let's talk about things together. Mm. We're so conditioned to talk to women about our problems, but that can put our partners or our girlfriends or our whoever else into a state of mothering us, which makes us feel like less of a man. They go into that masculine. That doesn't work. Attractivity disappears and dies. And then you wonder, how do we end up in this way? There's no more polarity left. So I say, men, come to the man cave. This is where you let it all out so that you can go back stronger to your partners. And it, and it really is powerful. It really, it really works. Whenever they go home, they feel like they're good. Or they can say, I spoke to the boys about this, 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 and this. This is what we're going to do. Mm. That's different to just pouring it all out and not having any kind mm. of way forward. Yeah. And granted, there are times when we don't know what the way forward is and there is someone that you can lie on their lap and cry to. Like, of course. Yeah. I want to know that I can I can do that with my partner. I told her this morning. I was like, I still want to know that I can cry on your lap. She goes, no, of course. But I said, my man that will always find a way. Yeah. And that will give her that safety and security so she hasn't got to find a way out. And that's just the way that polarity works. Um, and men are slowly, especially the, the men in the group, are finding their way to understand mm. that process. But in the day-to-day -day world it's tough, tough man. you know and mental health is a really big thing yeah. and i like that it's getting more traction it's yeah, getting it's a lot too. more awareness yeah. you know how would you describe your mental health now uh i think it's i think i'm a lot more aware these days like i so I think to go back to, to the idea of, of religion and faith and all that, right? So I started to see life as a series of, series of patterns and not and patterns of events and not not like in terms of, oh, I've done this before. So no, no, it's more of, you know, um, good things are coming. And the reason why good things are coming are because of maybe one decision you've taken there, one thing you've done there, this thing you've thought there. So before I didn't have that clarity, I didn't have that awareness. So as much as I wanted to say, yeah, I, I had it, I really didn't. I think these days, um, you know, I'm able to clearly, and, and I've noticed this the other day, like even with people that I speak to, even with decisions I want to take, I take them clearly. There's n there's not much of this thing of, I'm just doing it, you know, we'll do it, we'll do it, we'll say, no, no, it's more of, okay, I take a decision now, but what's the impact of it? later on, mm. like in a week, two years, whatever time. Um, there are things that I am struggling with, to be to be very blunt. Uh, relationships here, are they're tough. They're not, they're, to me, they're not easy. Because the thing that I want to actually talk to you about, we'll talk about it, which is... Let's do it, let's go. No, okay, no, so, <laughs> so look, so, so globally, and maybe even here in Dubai, there's this big conversation around, we need men to be more vulnerable, right? There yes. is some of that discussion. Yes. So as a vulnerable man like myself, you go and you do that. Then they're like, yeah, but actually we don't like that. So then it's like, okay, so you want me to be that. I am that. Then you don't like it. But then if I'm the complete opposite, I'll be not, you know, so. And, and this is why, again, when I even think about what I just said now, like maybe that's just honestly just wrong person. Great time. Mm. Because you've cause, great time because you've noticed it early on and you didn't live in this fantasy land where things could work out um but yeah man i, I think in general things are looking up uh, like in alhamdulillah in life um can't complain i'm getting back to where i want to be um some things maybe more so than others but we're getting there nice um uh, but yeah why do you think that it has to be vulnerable or not vulnerable it's a spectrum mm, yeah what do you think women really mean by we want men to be more vulnerable? If it isn't bawling your eyes out, expressing no, your no, entire course truth, not. what yeah. do you think they mean then? Look, I think something I was saying in the previous episode, um, it's like a hybrid approach mm -hmm. where where you're you're vulnerable, you're emotional, but you're not 
you're not crying your eyes out every single day to your partner. That's that I agree. I I would never do. Um, but also as well, having that clarity and that power within yourself to pick yourself back up and to be able to take those decisions, even when you are feeling down and vulnerable and not in maybe a good place yep. to be a person that leads yep. and not person that's being led. Um, and just taking ownership of, of your life, irrespective of wherever it is that you're going and like wherever you are in life now. Um, you know, and I think for me, yeah, uh, I think for me, maybe I didn't, I'm not going to say I didn't think about it like that. I, there are times where I did other times I was just, as I was saying, I didn't, I didn't have that clarity. I wasn't, yeah. you know, I was like, yeah, I'm doing this, all these things that I know I should be doing, but I'm not. Um, but yeah, I think vulnerability is awareness. Mm. I think when we can show that we're aware of what's happening mm. in our, inside of us, in our social settings, um, being vigilant to those changes in emotions and being able to say, hmm, oh, you know what? I'm noticing that I'm feeling like this. This is what's coming up for me. And this is why I responded this way. Sorry about that. Um, how did that make you feel? And that as a dialogue is far more powerful and stronger. And that for me is vulnerability. Mm. And also saying, listen, this is what's going on right now. This is what I need from you. Mm. Um, is that okay or is that not okay? Can you do this? If you can't, it's completely okay. But this is what I need. I'm just expressing my truth, my honesty, but I can handle whatever comes next. Mm. That's different. A man that can do that and re respond and not react, I think, makes us strong in our vulnerability. Mm. Or even able to say, listen, I just feel really, really damn down. I feel sad. Mm. And this is why I feel sad. I think they want to see that. But when it's met with like stoicism and silence and yeah, yeah, yeah. just, or even as the only emotion that we can sometimes express is anger, mm. that's what isn't attractive. Of course. You know? So, uh, but it's funny, I was speaking to someone recently and they're telling me they've been out on like dates and what they're, what they're experiencing now is they've met a man who is super stable, really aware, really emotionally intelligent and they're like, I'm bored. I'm bored. I feel like just starting a fight. And listen, this is what you need to change. Yeah. Okay, you're used to the up-down toxicity of, of it and I get it. But I was like, make sure that you've taken the polarity of what you need into mm. the bedroom or something, like you take it mm. there, but you don't need to create these fights. Yeah. He'll leave, I'm sorry, he will. A man that is stable and knows himself won't take won't take this. Oh, definitely. You know, um, but sometimes we're addicted to that. Yeah, True. I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, look, a lot of times, a lot of times, we love the chase. We love the we love the the challenge. Men of, love the chase. Yeah, we love the challenge of, you know, get, of of, some, of something that seems so far fetched that eventually it worked out or it it could work out, and we just keep on going, going, going. But then you realize that you're hurting yourself and your masculinity in the process, where you're like, I'm degrading quote unquote myself to to really get somebody who I know is isn't right for me. As a person, mentally, spiritually, we're very different. Um, you know, uh the the way that I feel around them isn't great. Maybe the way that maybe they feel around me isn't great because maybe I don't align with how they want to live their life. So so yeah. How do you know if you're ready for a relationship? You'll never know. To me. Nah, it's rubbish. No, no, trust me. I mean, okay, of course there's the basics. Of you know, okay, I'm I'm doing, you know, uh, like I'm I'm going out, I'm meeting people, I'm I'm I'm, how do you say, like I'm, um, yeah, I'm I'm meeting different schools of thought, so I'm therefore my mind's a little bit more open to, to different things. Um, socially, I'm doing well, so it means that I have different friend groups. So, uh, to me, this is how I see it. Um, but as well, even like financially, I don't have to worry because I don't know, I th I don't know if it's Dubai thing, by the way, but like. Everything here is expensive. So like you need to know that, you know, I, I'm I'm ready f you know, if I am to go out on a date with someone, I know that I, I won't I won't choke or I won't struggle with that. Um but as well as well feeling that, you know, there is a space for someone that I can nurture and they can and I, I can be near nurtured as well. Yeah. And there's something that I can offer them in their life and, and me myself being open to new ideas and new ways of thinking and living. Um these are the basics, I, I feel. Um, beyond that, I think the rest of it is just timing and fate. What do you think? So I think that there are certain things, like you said, that will mean that we are ready to be with someone. Mm. Because no matter how, no matter how you feel about the dynamics of relationship, whether it should be providing or not providing, um, I feel that there are certain things that we can do to make sure we're ready. Like having a job. I think counts mm. having some kind of level of income 
um, and I didn't right when I was here, so I didn't really feel like I I should or could be dating. So mm. I I didn't like I. Didn't. I think it's important. It's important mm. to know that you can take care of the person that you're with, or at least like you said, go out and not choke. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think being emotionally ready. You're not hanging on to a past. You're not still in love with someone else. You're not yeah. regretting something. Um, you're open to really be with one person. And yes, it depends on the person, but are you ready to actually do that? You know, knowing what you want as well, I think is really important. Do you want kids? Do you not want kids? Mm -hmm. So you can have that conversation. What I see with men nowadays is they can just wing it for as long as possible. But that creates this kind of flighty attitude where they don't know what they want. Yeah, And I do feel like we should know what we want. And if you don't know what you want, start to ask yourself the questions. Start to feel into, do I want children? Do I want to be married? Do I want to stay in Dubai? Do I want to go somewhere else? Like, What is the life that you want to paint for yourself so that when a woman comes into your frame, yeah. which is kind of how things used to be and how some people still want it to be quite traditionally, is she will walk into your frame, which means you've got to have a frame. But if you don't, you've got a house of straw and it's going to be blown away in the wind. He's like, well, this is not a safe bet for me. Mm. So if you don't know what you want, I'm not here to hang about. Yeah, this uh, situations happen, and all this like, oh, I don't know what he wants, and and he wants to go with the flow. I don't like it. It's not attractive. Mm. It's not nice. Mm. It, it's no. There's no point. But if you're clear with, I just want to have fun, and say, hundred percent. Yeah, I was not that guy back in the back in the day. Back in especially back in the UK, I would just date for the sake of dating. I didn't know what I, what I wanted, but I would almost pretend that I wanted a relationship. Not a good man. No. Not a good man. Uh, whereas being here, I, like, I know what I want. I want marriage. I want kids. I want a, a, a kingdom, and yeah. I want uh, you know this whole king queen situation. That's what I like. That's what I want. I want that power couple attitude. Um, w one that I can take care of, and she's my support. She will lift me up, be there in the front row of all of my events and stuff. And I'll be there whatever she's running. I'll be there too. You know that's what I want. But we do live in a place where. People lack the accountability of that mm -hmm. and are honest with themselves. Question for you. So when you talk about, you know, your ideal <laughs> relationship or, or when you think about it, is that is any of that driven or or maybe brought up from childhood and maybe even the way that you are, the way that, uh, as a man, the way that you see, uh, you know, the way you want your life to panel, maybe even the way you are today, is any of that based off of maybe the way that you've grown up like from childhood maybe any learnings you've taken I think maybe. it's the opposite of what I saw okay you know I didn't see I mean they did okay my parents but they eventually got divorced okay and there were certain things certain dynamics especially around things like the running of the household and like money that mm. I feel I don't want to ever see mm. and I want to be the opposite of that okay. I want to make sure we're both good as we are but together we're even stronger you know, and yeah. I've got a woman next to me that says, I believe in your mission yeah. and I hope we get there. You know, you can come home and let it all out with me and then you're going to push you out there and go. And my partner now, she's amazing. She'll tell me about like, you know, my mannerisms, how to act and behave in certain places. And I'm not, I'm not used to being in maybe more affluent places. And she will almost educate me on etiquette, mm. which is brilliant because she's like, I need you to be the guy. So I will pinpoint things for you that I feel like you need to be mindful of. Mm -hmm. How you dress, how you speak, how you stand, who you're speaking to, all, all these little things. And this is support. Yeah. You know, I've seen some videos where that woman has like lifted her man's chin up. That's the kind of woman that I've got. You know, and that's what I feel we all deserve. But we also have to be that guy. Have to be the guy. Of course. Go out there, be a man on your mission, be a good man. Of course. Not a nice guy. It's a difference, right? You know it. Nice guy, good man. And if a woman tells you you're too nice, it's because she wants you to be a little bit of the bad boy. Yeah. But you've got to just know how to activate it. Mm. It doesn't mean that you're a bad person. It means you have the ability to be tenacious and be a man of your word. Mm. And that also might mean something that you say that she might not like, but you have to go stand by it and go do what you got to do. With respect, of course. Of course. That's why course. it's good man. And not nice guy. The nice guy will say anything just to make and keep peace, even if it's against his own values and beliefs and morals, um, and putting himself down in the process. That is unattractive, and that does not make a good man. And the nice yeah. guy is the other most popular thing that I encounter with the men group. And a lot of the men that join the group mm. are nice guys, and we're mm. working on that. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah.
man, that, that, that that's crazy. You know, the thing is, you know, growing up, they, you know, they'd always say, uh, nice guys finish last. And uh, I think up until recently, uh, I didn't really make sense of that line so yeah, much. Me too. Uh, until I was like, okay, I'm seeing it. Yep. I, I really see it. And uh, yeah, especially like friends around me go through it. Sometimes I go through it as well. Um, but but again, you know, you, you, you need to know how to balance yourself between, mm -hmm. okay, what's right for me as a man, what's right for me to do, but also what's good for the other person. So maintaining that balance mm -hmm. of what's true to me as Karim, but as well, what's, you know, how do I also act in a way that's respectful and yeah, respectful to the other person that I don't hurt their feelings in the process or whatever it may be. So, uh, so yeah, that's so. What, what what is the solution there? How do you move from being the nice guy to the good man? Just be honest, man. Be honest with yourself. Yes, honestly, something something you feel isn't right, you fucking say it. You don't keep it in. Yeah, and I'm and I'm starting to realize, like I'm starting to do that a bit more now in life in general, not like yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's no point, man. Like, what's the point? You know, if you keep your thoughts in. The, the, the whole time is you, you, you start to realize you, you, start, you might start thinking that what if my thoughts are useless what if I what I think is has no value or maybe what I believe in has no purpose or value but that's a comp it's to me is very wrong you know whatever you say whatever you think say it be like a kid literally yeah. be, be a kid in, in that sense of say what you think yeah uh, and just don't be afraid yeah and that's the thing what are we afraid of nothing well, rejection Re i mean a lot of times rejection right? rejection and in terms of just in general in society right we're afraid of being yeah rejected uh shunned from the from the social group mm. um laughed at so embarrassment and and just not being accepted mm. we just want to be accepted yeah. we want to be loved accepted seen valued and be part of the group and from an innate perspective the one that was not accepted by the tribe mm. was left alone to die so there's that element we don't have to worry about war and at least not in this country yeah. we don't have to worry about being eaten by animals and all the kind of thing and being left alone to fend for ourselves. but we are afraid of not being accepted mm. and that's a very real fear but would you rather be accepted for being the real you or be accepted for being this other version of you that isn't even true which mm. puts you into a place of do they really like me yeah. which is worse by the way how do you uh where do you find your potential dates? <laughs> uh, usually on the apps. So mm. I, I try that, uh, but I've gotten a bit demotivated, to be honest. Yeah. Um, and then, again, I think just th by trying different things, by going to different circles, going to different events. Nice. And, and I don't go in with that intention. It's yes. just if it happens to work out great, if it doesn't, perfectly normal, it's totally fine. Perfect. It's probably the wrong timing. For, and that's how I started to see life, right? Um, but yeah, there was some, fuck, there's something that I want to tell you. Um, uh, it's fine. I'll, uh, it's okay. I wanted to ask you what you felt it meant to be a man. I think, you know, to, um, I, you need to play both cards, right? So you need to play the card of the strong, the masculine, the, the one who's going to defend me or defend himself, uh, when in danger or when not in danger, like protect himself in general. Right. Uh, do what's right, be uh, have a good faith in God, um, believe that things happen in life for a reason and trust that process and not try to create a process that or, or a path that doesn't exist. Um, but as well, holding enough space where, where we're, you know, where we can help others, where we can really listen to other people and help them achieve the best version of themselves um as well help uh you know for example if, if in your case maybe your partner if she's ever feeling down you hold that space to say you know what i'm here i've got you not because i'm a man not because i'm protective but actually i have more strengths in me than you might think because i'm empathetic i can i can hold these conversations uh you know and and i care i'm here for you you yeah. know uh, it's to be that supporting system that maybe we might not have, we might not have had as, as an attribute in the past um i think as well again just being a good man of your word yeah. so whatever you say is, is what you have to do yeah um and something actually that i that i learned not learned i i got reminded of from hisham in one of the episodes we did in the past where he, he spoke about it. he's like being a man is, is being true to your word 
And since that episode, I've been thinking about it every single day. Like that's so true because when I look at my dad, for example, what he says he does, even even if it doesn't work, even but you know what? I've done it. I've tried it. Yep. There are days when I have decisions I need to make and I've I need to stay true to my word. Yeah. Need to be true to myself. And to me, that's what's the most important thing for me now. And accept what comes next. Blindly. Because that's part of God's plan. Hundred percent, man, and that's the bit that I feel we're quite scared of is accepting the consequence. Yeah, this is why we we shy away from confrontation. Definitely, we don't want to say our truth because we're not we don't want to handle the potential conflict. Mm. Yeah, conflict is huge, and that's why I started the boxing thing with the boys. Mm. Right, it's just if you can handle getting punched in the face, I think you can handle most things. Yeah, being honest. exactly. I think I think the worst thing is getting punched in the face. One of the worst things, but yeah, but yeah. So, how did the way we like to end every episode? Uh, is I'm going to hand you the notebook. Uh, you might might have seen it. Or not. Basically, what it is, um, it's a notebook in which you will write down a quote of your choice that has helped you along the way. Uh, if anyone is if anyone is struggling, anyone is feeling down, uh, and they will have to read through this quote, what would it be? Would so, you write it or say it? Uh, write it. All right, I'm going to say it as well then. Go ahead. So it's feel the fear. Mm. That has got me through a lot. Yeah, that's crazy, man. I mean, what was I mean Mine uh, is just don't be afraid and go for it anyway. There so we it's, go. it's a bit similar. Yeah. Yeah. But mine is feel the fear. Feel the fear, yeah. Because there's nothing wrong with being afraid. Yeah. But that shouldn't stop you. Because on the other side of fear is freedom. Every single time. Man, Chris, I, I can never say his last name. Chris Williams. Chris Williams. Chris Williamson. Chris Williamson once said it. He was like, um, he, he'll say, um, I think like, what you're too afraid to do is on the other side of yeah. something. Like, uh, something the thing that you're so that you're most afraid to do is this thing you should is the probably the thing you should be doing that will unlock everything else. Exactly. So, and I heard that most recently. Yeah. I don't know, maybe you were speaking to Alex Hormozzi or someone. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I love that. And it's like, and I heard it at the right time. I'm like, damn. Literally, it's crazy how algorithms get you every time. Yeah. Every but time. I listen to Alex Hormozzi almost every day. Yeah. And Chris Williamson recently, him and it was three hour podcast that did recently. Mm, mm. Love these guys. He's funny because he speaks in quotes only. Yeah. That's literally, it. literally, yeah. <laughs> but he's so good at it, though. Yeah. Says a quote, throw it back, conversation, next quote. It's amazing. Yeah. Anyway, but I think, yeah, I think, sorry to go back to one thing you were saying, because I just remembered it now. You know, there's something that I discussed a lot in therapy, by the way, which is feeling left out or feeling like I don't fit in the tribe, right? Mm. Uh, especially in a city like Dubai, where there's so many different people from all walks of life, people who maybe are doing better than you, uh, financially, s socially, whatever. Uh, you always feel like, I need to fit in, and then there's and then there was always this question of, do I need to fake it till I make it, or do I need to be true to myself, and make it even though it's disgusting in the process. Yeah. But the end goal of it is beautiful. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's just the last message I wanted to leave uh, before we before we wrap up, wrap up uh, the episode. Thank you so much, man. This man, is good. My pleasure. It was, we finally did it. I think there's going to be a part two. Definitely. Um, so watch this space for part two. Literally. Uh, <laughs> there's so much more to go. I think today was. Intro. It had to be it had to be everything. Yeah. yeah. Like it was a bit mishmash. Yeah, I quite like it. I like it. That's why like I never want to know what questions, I don't want to know anything. Let's just wing it. Best Good conversations. Go for it. Yeah. Love it. Love it, love, it, love it, man. Thank, thank you so much for being here. No, and uh, yeah, we'll see I wanna you see, on part I wanna, two. I want to see you at the Brotherhood. Done. Count me in. Good man. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah, good stuff. Have you got a photo? Of course, bro. Let's get one here.